I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice like a bride adorned with her jewels. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's very good to see more people returning to the cathedral and especially on this solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain, by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw. So through her intercession, we too may be cleansed and admitted, admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. After Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord called to him. Where are you? He asked. I heard the sound of you in the garden, he replied. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? He asked. Have you been eating of the tree I forbade you to eat? The man replied, it was the woman who put with me, she gave me the fruit and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, what is this you have done? The woman replied, the serpent tempted me and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, be accursed beyond all cattle all wild beasts. You shall crawl on your belly and eat dust every day of your life. I will make you enemies of each other. 
you and the woman, your offspring and her offspring. It will crush your head and you will strike its heel. The man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all those who live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, ring out your joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings of heaven in Christ. Before the world was made, he chose us, chose us in Christ, to be holy and spotless and to live through love in his presence, determining that we should become his adopted sons through Jesus Christ for his own kind purposes, to make us praise the glory of his grace. His free gift to us is the beloved, and it is in him that we were claimed as God's own, chosen from the beginning. Under the predetermined plan of the one who guides all things, as he decides by his own will, chosen to be for his greater glory, the people who would put their hopes in Christ before he came. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favoured, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow, and so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived the son, and she whom people called barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks. 
on the 8th of September, we celebrate the birthday of the Blessed Virgin Mary. On this day, nine months before we celebrate her birth, we celebrate her immaculate conception. It's important that we don't mix this solemnity up. We heard today in the gospel about how Jesus was conceived in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary and how his coming into the world was undoubtedly miraculous by divine intervention, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Mary herself conceives the divine son. But in order for him to be given to us, in order for us to be ready to receive he who is the source of all perfection, Mary herself, the mother of the divine son, is by a singular privilege and grace conceived without the spot or stain of original sin. Mary, even as a tiny one in the womb of her mother, was already full of grace by the gift of God's love for her. And as she grows in her life, she is always filled with that grace because of her yes to the Lord. She cooperated perfectly with God every day of her life. We might think of the Immaculate Conception as being far from our own reality. We might think that our struggle with concupiscence, the effect of original sin, is all too obvious for us to face every day. So how does celebrating the Immaculate Conception help us in our struggle with the effects of sin? We should know, brothers and sisters, that you don't need to sin to understand another person. That sin, in fact, attacks our humanity and makes us less the person that we were created to be. And so when we look at Mary, who is the Immaculate Conception, who is without spot or stain or blemish, we should be filled with hope that we too, if we are willing to cooperate with God's grace, can receive what He wants to give us in order for us to live with Him where the Blessed Virgin Mary has already gone before us, body and soul. And so on this great solemnity, we ask Our Lady to help us with her prayers, that we too can be filled with the grace that God offers freely for those who follow Him. Let's be upstanding to profess our faith in the one true God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified 
who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In her immaculate conception, Mary is revealed as the second Eve. She is God's new beginning for our race. As we honour her today, let us join her in prayer to our Father and Creator. For Holy Church, that she may grow towards the perfection of Mary, our destiny and our hope, let us pray to the Lord. For our world, that through prayer and penance it may enter an age of peace, the triumph of Mary's heart, let us pray to the Lord. For the pure in heart, that they may spread decency and harmony throughout society, let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves, that she who is full of grace may help us on our pilgrimage, let us pray to the Lord. For all the unborn and for their mothers, that they will be protected and nurtured to grow in health and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. For the dead, that they may rejoice forever with the Blessed Mother. Let us pray to the Lord. Father and Creator, hear us as we pray with the Immaculate Ever-Virgin Mary, chosen before the world was made to be the mother of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer, offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her, on account of your prevenient grace, to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride, without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, Terry and Richard, his assistant bishops, and all those who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Glorious things are spoken of you, O Mary, for from you arose the Son of Justice, Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault, from which in a singular way you preserve blessed Mary in her immaculate conception, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.